Good morning, everybody. Let me fix this. All right, hello. We are going to be talking today about nuclear chemistry. We're starting off uh, part of a little mini unit of nuclear chemistry. It's going to be something that we do a little bit of at a time. Um, and we're just going to start today with just a very simple T chart, chemical reactions versus nuclear reactions. I did attach a copy of this chart or this table on Classroom. So you can fill in that chart or you can just make your own in your notes. It's up to you. So chemical reactions, nuclear reactions. We've briefly started talking about chemical reactions and how they happen, what chemical changes are. But essentially, a chemical reaction involves valence electrons. Valence electrons are a specific type of electron that are in the out, outermost energy level of an atom. So as we start talking about the Bohr model or the electron orbits and energy levels, just keep in mind that we are going to start talking about valence electrons, but it is those electrons that are in the outermost energy levels that participate in chemical reactions. They're the ones that interact with each other, switch places, and cause that creation of new compounds. It's not changing the number of protons and neutrons because we're dealing with the same atoms. We're dealing with the same stuff in chemical reactions. That is not the case in nuclear reactions. In nuclear reactions, we are dealing with protons and neutrons, and a term for that is nucleons. So if you hear me talk about nucleons, I'm referring to the protons and the neutrons. I'm really concerned with the nucleus. That's why they're called nuclear reactions. All right? I just want to know what's going on in the nucleus of an atom, and we're going to see how that changes through these nuclear reactions. So how do these reactions start? Well, chemical reactions, we know that the reactants combined, so you'll usually have one or two, maybe three reactants that you mix together, and they form the products. Now, we often need to see a pressure change or an increase in temperature. Maybe a catalyst is used to start this reaction. Some reactants, you mix them, and they'll just react right away. That doesn't always happen, so sometimes we do need to increase the pressure, increase the temperature, or maybe add a catalyst. A catalyst, just a fancy word for like a kickstart or a jumpstart, something that's going to force the reaction to start. So that's how chemical reactions occur. All right, nuclear reactions, very different. We have particles bombarding the nucleons. So the nucleons, remember, that's what's in the nucleus, the protons and the neutrons. So other particles will come in and bombard, right? So hit really hard the nucleus, or you need a huge temperature increase to kickstart this reaction. These nuclear reactions are not something that's just going to happen. Boom unexpectedly, usually. All right. For the most part, we need a huge energy change to make these nuclear reactions occur. So we're either bombarding the nucleus or we need a big temperature increase to sort of jumpstart that reaction. So in the chemical reactions, what we make so what we end up with, right, we start with the reactants, one or two, maybe three things that we're mixing together, and we combine them and we made a new substance. We have products. We created new bonds. We rearranged how the structures um, were organized and we made new bonds, but the original atoms were still there. Okay, so when we mixed up, I'm trying to think of any of the reactions that we did, baking soda and vinegar, we still have the carbon and the hydrogen and the oxygen that we started with. We just rearranged it into new ways, okay? But we didn't change the identity of the atoms. We changed the identity of the compounds, okay? But not the atoms. Not the case in a nuclear reaction. In a nuclear reaction, we are dealing with protons and neutrons, right? We know that protons are the identity of an element. That is something that we just learned. Atomic number is protons. That's the identity of the atom. And so when we mess with that atom, we change the protons and the neutrons, we're making new atoms. All right. So when we make new atoms, we have new stuff going on. And I hope you realize that all of this energy, all these new atoms that I've been talking about with the nuclear reactions, it means that there is a huge amount of energy involved in nuclear reactions, especially like compared to the chemical reactions. Chemical reactions, very small amount of energy. Nuclear reactions, very large amount of energy. And that's pretty much all I have for you today. Hope you got your chart finished.